Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we are going to head to the woods and go tree shopping. We've got to finish up our two by sixes that we're milling for camp and I need some more logs. So we're going to go into the woods and uh, find that perfect tree and see what we can get out. We had a lot of rain last night, so it's a little muddy. So I'm going to try to pick a tree that's um, uh, I can get into easily with my tractor, I'm not going to tear up a bunch of stuff in the process and be able to get it down safely. So come with me if you want. So the plan is to find a nice straight poplar. Uh, poplar is the uh, wood of choice, that's what I'm milling everything else. And this area here has a decent beginning of poplar and this is an area that I'm uh, starting to thin out for silvo practice purposes for the uh, silvo pasture purposes for the the pigs I'm gonna to look I may have one down here that I can get to I got a red oak here There's a decent little poplar right there that's not a bad one a little bit of a swag at the top. I'd like to get, I mean, getting multiple logs out of uh, out of one tree and really maximizing it. That's a red oak. So I don't want him. Of course, there's some Virginia pine. There's another oak. A little poplar right here. I think we'll keep looking. got this poplar right here he's kind of in the way of my road I'd like my road to be a little wider especially since there's a huge spring right here yeah check this thing out and again we did get a lot of rain this thing is constantly running like this so that's just coming out of the side of the mountain there it's pretty rocky so that it would explain why there's a an outlet in fact you can see you see the hole right there. You got my phone in the water. See the water coming out of that hole right there. So, uh, point is to this is my ditch in the road. I want to get it over there a little bit so I'm not driving through it constantly. And of course, that tree is hindering. But you can see the first six feet of that are going to be an issue. Because it goes kind of swampered, kind of a it's not necessarily the sexiest. Got some dead ash around here, a couple smaller poplar. I think we'll go up on the mountain and see what we can find. I think this is gonna require some four wheel drive here. Everywhere. All right, so here's our, I've documented this multiple times, here's our slip that happened many, many moons ago. And when I had the dozer in here last year, I was able to, to clear this road back out because it had, uh, you can see all this deadfall uh, that had come off the mountain there. Of course, sycamore, as usual, is taking over all that, but grow it get some stability there but I've got a lot of poplar in this area this whole area probably 20 30 years ago was all cleared I guess that was before us 
but you can just see I mean you got a nice poplar right here one right there a double trunk there decent one here decent one there there's a bunch this way so um, definitely could could handle being thinned out a little bit because they're definitely competing with one another good timber stand of course but I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I think we'll go grab this turkey right here. You can kind of see he's, he's kind of in the middle of my road. <laughs> so my road could be much wider here if it wasn't for this guy. And he's pretty darn straight. He's got just a little bit of a swag right there. And it goes up just some small variation. But uh, he does have some scarring here. Well, he's got a hole in him, so I figure this is about it's about three feet. So I'm probably going to lose the first. Oh, probably going to lose the first five feet, maybe six feet, depending on how hollow that core is. But you can kind of see how that's got a weird belly to it. So the best part of the log is probably going to start about right here, and probably still have some core issues. We'll see if we can put this joker on the ground. So okay, the plan is to drop this that way so it doesn't cover up my road and I can get to it and so it doesn't fall on my equipment or fall on me. Let's see. All right, I don't know if y'all could see that because of the being in the shade and the sun coming through there, but <laughs> that's just the way it goes. You see the wind pick up just as I was doing my plunge cut, knowing this tree's hollow. That wind picked up, and of course it's coming out of the east, which it never comes out of the east. It always comes out of the west, and so just enough to get your panties in a bunch there. But it went exactly where I wanted it to go. Praise the Lord, because there's my road. I wanted it to fall right here. Took out a little widowmaker snag of this sycamore, which I'm fine with that. But uh, she definitely got some punk in her. <clears throat> you can see here, definitely, definitely still soft. You can see that on the end of the log. So we'll see. We got a decent run here. Let's measure her out and see what we've got yet another reason to use my very expensive tape measure Kelly if you're watching which you never do <laughs> okay so the distance to the till we get to this fork so there's 35 feet <clears throat> so obviously um, Three ten footers is probably what I'll take out of that, and maybe you know eleven footers, of course, to have some stuff to work with. So that's going to be a decent little run. Now, of course, here comes the wind out of the north now, or out of the south. Um, so of course the uh, the situation is how far up is uh, this log? Is it is it rotten? So I'll stick a blade in it, maybe cut. Well, shoot, I may cut the first couple feet off and see what we get. And if it's if there's no core rot there, then start. If there's a lot of core rot, then of course come further up. Since I technically have about five feet to, to cut off, 
you know, obviously you hate to cut it off the big end, but if the big end's core rot, then you're wasting time. We'll see what we get. There's a little bit dangerous close to the end of it, so I think what I'll do is go ahead and cut my log lengths, skid it out of here, and uh, then we'll we'll clean it up once we get down on the mill, because that'll be a uh, that'll be some additional cutoff I can do if need be. Now, logically or ideally, it'd be nice to skid this off the hill as one log with the tractor and be done. But I can't do that. It's a 35-foot pole dragging it down my windy roads. It'd be kind of tough to pull that off without getting wedged between trees and stuff. So uh, and I can't just cut it in half because that defeats the purpose. I want three logs. So we'll probably may cut the first, the first two logs out as one log and see if I can get it off the hill that way. That'd be about you know, 21, 22 and then leave the rest uh, for a second trip. Somebody loves sticking the saw in the wedges. <laughs> so, uh, so just a side note, critique. <clears throat> so Kelly and I were watching a movie the other night called uh, Only the Brave. Really good movie about the true story of the hot shots, the Granite Mountain hot shots. I won't tell you any more than that, but I thought it was interesting. In the movie, Josh Brolin, who's the head of this wildfire fighting team, he's putting his kit together. He's getting his chainsaw stuff out and he sets his wedges out because he's just making sure his kit's together. And his wedges are clean. There's not a single scratch on him or a mark. I thought, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Granted, those could have been brand new wedges. But when you look at my wedges, there's saw marks all in them. And they're dirty and they're cracked. And maybe he's just good that he doesn't stick a saw in his wedge. Anyway, check out that movie. It's a good one. <clears throat> well, you may be wondering, okay, why'd you cut so high? Well, of course, as I showed earlier, this this big scar here with the hollow core. I didn't want to do my cuts, my back cut, or my uh, bird's mouth here, and my plunge cut with all this. It just wasn't as comfortable feeling as going higher. Um, since this is going to be in my road, I'm going to come back here with my saw here now and cut this little this stump off. That way I can get around it easier with my tractor. Take the tractor bucket and move that when we get back. Okay, so now go fetch the tractor and start skidding along.
All right, so the boys helped me get the logs down. We had uh, one 22-footer and then one 11-footer. So we've got those. Now, of course, since we've had so much rain and kind of saw the condition of the road there, a lot of mud on those logs, and that's really hard on a blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to try option number three. I've got some hose stretched out here all the way to that rain barrel at the corner of my workshop. So you can see there, that's just a 55-gallon drum that's catching rain from the downspout. Well, the plan, um, this is kind of plan C. Plan A was to get our well casing. I've got a well, a 50-foot deep well, right at the end of the, uh, the sawmill. And I just obviously haven't hooked up a pump to that yet. Plan B, put gutter systems on the barn, have an IBC tote elevated, so that way it fills up you know, 250, 275 gallons of water and then be able to feed a hose there. Well, what we're going to try to do is siphon from the 55 gallon drum with our pressure sprayer. I'm hoping the pressure sprayer will produce enough siphon that it'll uh, get us going there. All right, so this log obviously has a bit of a dirty belly since we drug it through the woods and the road and the mud. So we'll see if we can get a siphon here and start a washing. Well, that sucks, or does it? <laughs> so, couldn't get enough siphon there. Uh, get a little burst of pressure, so um, obviously not elevated enough. That's why I wanted to do the IBC tote. Uh, elevated, can't get enough head pressure there that it could feed the pressure spur. So we're gonna cheat. We're gonna drop a submergible in here, in the bottom of this bucket, and see if we can get what we need from there. Again, takes the fun out of it being uh, a little more automatic. But again, you're still using a gas appliance, so it's not like it's off grid or anything. So we're going to stick that right down in there. Lay down. Plug in. I hear the sounds of sucking. All right, cameraman, follow me. Recording. <laughs> well, I wasn't getting as much pressure as I'd like out of that, but uh, still got a pretty clean log. So that'll save me on my blade. Actually, my blade is about due to be changed. What I like to try to do is start a new log cut the bark off of it with the, the blade and then that's when I retire so when I'm putting a new blade on I'm not putting it in uh, putting it in fresh fresh bark fresh blade on bark um, but yeah again it's, it's semantics at that point but that's just kind of the way I do it so we'll uh, start milling You know what the problem was? 
spot wasn't getting pressure. There's a mosquito larvae pulling from the tank. I've got this real fine screen on the pressure sprayer so it doesn't mess up the pump. Some mosquito larvae are all getting wedged against that screen, so it's restricting the water flow. Clean the screen, you get pressure. So this is one of those situations where a bigger log is going to yield a bigger cant. And since I'm doing dimensional wood, I can get two stacks of two by sixes out of this instead of just a single stack. So I'm going to be able to, in essence, double the amount of two by sixes I can get out of this log since it was a bigger diameter and I can get the 11 inch, this is 11 inch wide cant here. So I'm going to stand it up 90 degrees, cut it in half, and then flip it over and we'll do two stacks. So we'll give it a turn. And now we'll cut All right, so we got that one tree milled up, and so we had to cut some portion off of it. So, of course, that came off of it, and I can't remember what I took two cuts off of that. No, okay, just the one. That was from a previous log. So just the one cut where we had, uh, had some curve and still had some core rod in it. You can see those dark spots. So uh, actually some of my two by six is the very beginning of them about four inches in had some core okay so one tree in the woods obviously dummy where else would they be one of those logs produced all of these two by sixes so one tree three logs one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so sixteen two by sixes and some other scraps that i have i got a couple two by fours got a couple other uh, one inch boards just to get my cant squared so that's not bad if you remember that log that log of course had a big old hollow spot in it a dead spot so that uh, that tree really had no other value it was a poplar as we do our silvo pasture um, processes around here i don't want to leave too many poplar in the pasture because they just don't produce uh, protein they don't produce anything conducive for the pigs and to me a poplar turns great uh, is, is much better served as wood now there's a boatload of poplar elsewhere on our property so i'm not uh, wiping out our collection of poplar here well, that leads me to uh, a response I want to make to a comment. Again, I really appreciate everybody commenting. I try to respond to all of them if there are specific questions. If it's a statement or an affirmation, I give you a thumbs up. I appreciate that. appreciate everybody taking the time to watch and to comment. And again, I try to answer questions when they're asked. But one particular person um, commented and said, uh, one of our videos where we're doing what we're doing here, comment was, stop cutting trees. The world needs them. And so I'm going to make some assumptions from that basic statement that the assumption is uh, the reason why this individual doesn't want me cutting trees is due to climate change, carbon sequestration, global warming, again, you know, all of those things that the world needs more trees uh, because our world is dying. And 
not getting political. I'm not getting in any of that stuff. And I'm not even getting scientific because I am not one. Um, you know what I am. I like to make sawdust. But to that, I'd say if the concern is I'm cutting trees down that are going to be sequestering carbon um, and I'm taking that out of the equation, then I would encourage that individual to, hey, you look at grasslands. Uh, there's a lot of research out there that shows that grasslands are, are doing as much, if not more, carbon sequestration than har uh, hardwood forests. So that's interesting. So as I take out trees here for our silvopasture process, opening up the canopy, allowing pasture grass to come up, again, leaving certain trees behind that are conducive for the silvopasture, for shade, for protein, for all the, all the things that they produce, uh, then I, I'd like to think I'm striking a balance there. More grass, still some trees working out there. Again, the poplar poplar serves me better as material to to build barns, to build structures, to do those type of things instead of going out and, and buying uh, processed wood that, of course, takes a lot of um, uh, fossil fuels to produce, all that type of stuff. That's not my main motivation, mind you, but the material's here. I'm going to use it. I'm going to mill it. I'm going to build with it. So um, I'd like to think that with what I'm trying to do with silvopasture, what I'm trying to do with rotational animals, we're going to build soil back up. The soil around here was absolutely shot because it was, it was over farmed back in the 60s. So I'd like to think I'm building soil back up. And of course, I'm producing material that I need. So, um, so again, I, I appreciate everybody's comments. I don't agree with that statement. Uh, but hey, man, that's the beauty of the internet. Everybody's got an opinion, right? So, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm doing my part one way or another, maybe indirectly, but we'll see. All right, take care, everybody.